Welcome to Engineering Studio with Dr. Muhammad Tahir. In this video, we are going to discuss about the lateral support or lateral bracing of beams, which is provided to prevent the lateral torsional buckling of the steel beam. So, in case of beams, lateral support is generally required to provide to be provided for the compression flange to prevent from lateral torsional buckling. So, we provide the lateral support to the compression flange of the beam so that we can prevent the lateral torsional buckling of the section. So the lateral support can be of following types. So we can provide a continuous lateral support. So in this case compression flange is braced laterally along its entire span. So this is possible in case of composite section. So if we embed the compression flange of the beam inside the slab, RCC slab, or if we connect the flange by using the shear connectors with the slab, with the concrete slab. So in that case, the section will be acting as a composite section and this compression flange will be braced against the, uh, will be braced against the lateral movement. So if the compression flange is braced against the lateral movement, so there will not be any chance of lateral buckling or lateral torsional buckling of the beam. The second way is we can provide lateral support at intervals. So we can, if it is not possible to connect the flange of the beam with the slab, with the RCC slab. So in that case, we can connect the compression flanges of the adjacent beam with each other, or we can provide the lateral support to the compression flange at the intervals. So this can be provided by cross beams, cross frames, ties or struts framing in laterally. So we can see over here in this figure, so this is a beam, so these are the beams and a lateral support is provided at intervals. So this is the second way to provide the lateral support to prevent the lateral torsional buckling of the beam. So here if we see, so we have beams, we have provided the lateral support at the different positions. So this lateral support can be in the form of scantry beams or in the form of cross beam or cross frame. Okay, so while providing this support at the intervals, we need to make sure that the whole system do not buckle simultaneously. So for that, we need to provide the bracing. So if we provide the bracing, so in that case, the whole system will not buckle. And the other thing that we need to make sure that this bracing elements should not buckle itself. So if they buckle, when the main beam try to buckle or try to bend in the lateral direction so if these start buckling so in that case the lateral support will not be effective so we need to make sure or we need to make these cross beams strong so that they should not buckle and the second thing we need to provide the lateral bracing so that the whole system does not buckle simultaneously so this can be seen over here so if the cross bracings are not provided so the whole system will buckle simultaneously and these cross beams or bracings will not provide their intended purpose. So for that we need to provide these cross bracings. So when we provide the cross bracings, so in that case the buckling of the whole system can be prevented. So we can see over here, so this, these are the cross bracings and these are the cross frames. So the next is lateral support or the unsupported length. So the length between the two lateral supports, so that it is defined as the length of the beam within the two sections whose compression flange is laterally supported or braced against twist of the cross section by perpendicular beam, slab or by some other means. So in other words, we can say it is a distance between two points braced against lateral displacement of the compression flange and it is denoted by LB. So we can see in the previous slide over here, so this much distance is LB, unbraced length. So if we see over here, so from here up to here, this much is LB, unbraced length. The length or the distance between the two lateral bracing or the laterally braced points will be termed as unbraced length. And if the compression flange is continuously connected, are continuously braced so in that case the unbraced length will be zero 